This is the stargasm we've been seeing up and down the coast, and now we're seeing it wash up into the intercoastal. So I'm diving into the impacts this could have above and below the water, as more is expected to float in. Checking out the marine life. Snorkeling out there. It's my first time. Ten-year-old Dylan Mendez. There was a bunch of seaweed. Found himself dodging chunks of sargasm. Pieces of it going into my face, running into my goggles. That made its way into the intracoastal at Phil Foster Park. <laughs> and I kept fighting it off. I kept clearing the path. I wouldn't run into it. It's a small amount compared to what we've seen out by the coast, which I found out is part of a record-sized sargasm cluster floating out in the ocean with portions making its way to Florida. Offshore, it, it's a good thing, right? It supports this community of over 100 species of invertebrates and fishes. But when it comes ashore, when there's too much of it, it, it can become harmful. Dr. Bryant LaPointe is a researcher with FAU Harbor Branch. He's been pushing lawmakers to allow crews to collect the seaweed before it washes up on our beaches. It's not just the beaches. You hear a lot about the impacts on tourism and the beaches, but the reality is it's also doing a lot of, of harm to the, co the coastal ecosystems. He told me crews would have to remove 500 tons of sargasm a day to make a dent in the 37.5 million ton floating mass. I'm using the tea seaweed so it can have hair. It's a nuisance, Alex Nicholson. And also, it could be decorations. It's turning into a positive. To fill out all the broken spots. To help build his sandcastle. Like this. And avoid the chunks floating in the water. Every single time I see the animal, there's a seaweed sneaking up behind me, trying to attack me. As to how much we expect to wash ashore is hard to predict. Brian said it'll all depend on the tides, currents, and wind over the summer. Reporting in Palm Beach County, I'm Joel Lopez.